So here's a two-part problem that involves uh, rotational kinematics and torque. Okay, so a, a gyroscope slows from an initial speed of 32 radians per second at a rate of 0.7 radians per second squared. Okay, so the first question is, how many revolutions does it make before stopping? Okay, so let's um, imagine this gyroscope. We'll draw it here. All right, and we're told that it's um, rotating with some speed. So that um, that 32, that's an omega, right? An angular speed, an angular velocity, and um, the slowing at a rate that is uh, an alpha. That's an angular acceleration, and because this is slowing, that must mean the alpha is opposing omega, right? So we're asked to find the number of revolutions while this comes to rest. Okay, and you should re uh, recognize that that's related to um, delta theta, right? The, the angle that this travels through as it's slowing down. <clears throat> okay, so let's write down things that we know. Known values. Uh, we know omega initial is 32 radians per second. Um, it's asked how many revolutions before it comes to a rest, so that is omega final um, zero radians per second. <coughs> and um, they give us this rate. <coughs> that rate is um, an alpha value, right? 0 0.7 radians per second squared. And again, um, if this is coming to rest, then omega and alpha are pointing opposite directions. All right. So the way I've drawn it here, um, omega is counterclockwise, which is positive, and um, alpha is um, opposing that, so clockwise, which is negative. Um, that's arbitrary. I'm not told whether this is rotating clockwise or counterclockwise, and it actually doesn't matter. Um, because what we're looking for is a delta theta ultimately, um, or a number of rotations, and that doesn't necessarily need to have a sign. Okay, so um, we're looking for a delta theta. We know these things. If you look at the list of rotational kinematic equations, you can argue that um, this is the equation you should use, or uh, maybe the most direct way to solve for delta theta. Alright, so we plug in some numbers. Looks like uh, 0 equals 32 squared plus 2 times minus 0.7 times delta theta. <clears throat> if you solve that for delta theta, what you get is 731.4, and that's in radians. <clears throat> okay. So um, that's not our final answer, but it's a one step toward it. Um, if we're looking for a number of rotations, <coughs> we're pretty much asking, um, can we convert um, an angle traveled in radians to a number of rotations? So we just need to ask, how many radians are in a full rotation? And the answer is 2 pi. Right? So we take delta theta, we multiply by um, pretty much boils down to a conversion factor. One rotation is 2 pi radians, and if you do that, what you get is uh, 18.527 rotations, or um, rounding to three significant figures, 18.5 rotations. Okay, the second part of this problem says uh, if the rotating part of the gyroscope is um, a solid disc with a diameter of 6 centimeters and mass of 100 grams, what frictional torque is slowing down the, the gyroscope? So um, we'll draw it again and maybe label those. Here's my 6 centimeters and the mass is 100 grams. So in any of the math that I do, um, I'm always uh, more concerned about the radius. So I'm going to convert this uh, diameter to um, a radius. That's a very common mistake, so make sure when you see the word diameter um, that you're careful not to use that directly. 
because most of our equations use a radius. Okay, so that's 3 centimeters. <clears throat> and I'll write that in SI units. Um, that's 0 0.03 meters. Okay, and the mass here, um, let's convert that to kilograms at 0 0.1 kilograms. All right, what else do we know about this system? Well, um, we're looking for torque. Uh, so we can relate that to angular acceleration alpha, which was given above as um, minus 0.7 radians per second squared. All right, so we can relate torque and alpha using Newton's second law for rotation, right? Newton's second for rotation. <clears throat> which just says that the sum of the torques equals I times alpha, where I is this moment of inertia. <coughs> so in this case, we're going to assume that the only torque acting is this frictional torque. Right? We're going to assume that we're not spinning it in any other way, we're not pulling on it in any way. So um, the only torque that we need, this is what we're solving for, is I alpha. This is I in this case for a disk, because that's what we're assuming this is, a solid disk, times the alpha that we have. So a disk has a, uh, a moment of inertia, which is one half m r squared. All right, so I can plug some numbers into that, one half times 0.1 kilograms times uh, 0 0 0.03 meters times this uh, acceleration. And if you do that, um, uh, please allow me to, to write that up here. All right, if you do that math, what you get is minus 0 0.00315. And putting all these units together, it's kilogram meters, um, sorry, this should be squared, meters squared per second squared. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to do one, uh, one of a few things to this, actually. Um, I'm going to convert this to uh, scientific notation. All right, so we'll go 3.15 times 10 to the minus 5. And I'm going to recognize that I can combine some of these units, okay? Um, a kilogram, a meter, and a per second squared is all a newton. And what's left over is a meter. All right, and if you don't remember that, um, just remember that torque is newton meters. All right, so even if you don't follow that, if you know that you're solving for a torque, the units have to be newton meters. Right, and finally, I'm going to use this negative sign and just call it um, what it is. This is uh, clockwise, uh, clockwise rotation. All right, so it's clockwise torque in this case. So this is my answer.